that the final newspaper says the implementation of recommendations of the Constitution Review Commission declare official status group uh, as challenging government. That's a senior colleague there, Ira Bashan, is a convener of a group that's asking for government to set the ball rolling. And low electricity access in ECOWAS threatens SDG 7, uh, according to Dr. Baumia. ADB to increase agri loan portfolio by 50%. The managing director is promising. And court acquits and discharges Freddie Blay of contempt charge. The Daily Graphic, minerals contribute 2.3 billion Ghana cities in 2019. They contributed, I beg your pardon. And technical universities teachers strike to tag government in crunch meeting today. President leaves for Russia-Africa summit. The BNFT, government to establish cybersecurity fund. Buoy power to spill water today and cocoa farmers kick against CSSP cancellation. A uh, matter that um, Bright Appear of the Child Rights International spoke about passionately a few days ago. The Daily Guide US fights for PDS 190 million in limbo. It comes with a photo of Sa uh, Sean Cicinarius, uh, Sam Cross, beg your pardon, CEO of MCC, and uh, Blay Floors in Competence Raj, Nana in Russia for Summit. My guest this morning is Mr. George. You see, he is the National Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, and also the Honorable Al Hassan Suhini is the Member of Parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He is in the race one more time, hopefully, to win it. Gentlemen, welcome. Yeah, thank you. How thank are we you. doing? Very good. Alhamdulillah, terrific. Good Hope to see you. Welcome. Charlie, I can't complain. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I'm looking yeah. good always. I'm learning from the best, mm. so I... That's to madam. <laughs> you have a good governance <laughs> place. She chooses well. <laughs> I'm, I'm not part of your discussion. I beg you. <laughs> anyway, so, so there's, uh, there's uh, PDS in, in the mix, but... <laughs> The, yesterday I read that the teachers have been posted as we speak. Some trained teachers have been posted. Uh, that, that's good news, is it not? Uh, Mr. Easy, yeah. I'll start with you. <coughs> good morning, uh, Johnny, mm -hmm. and good morning to our viewers. Good morning to Honorable Suhini. Uh, yes, it's, it's good news uh, that uh, we, we have our young trained teachers uh, having completed and now having gone through their national service, uh, which is a precondition. And then there's another precondition, which is uh, the licensure exams. Right. And they've gone through that. So uh, having gone through all these processes and then having registered online, mm. uh, the Ghana Education Service went through the processes okay. and chose those who qualified and mm. have posted them. Uh, it's good news uh, for our young people and then for our classrooms, especially okay. places in uh, rural communities. Uh, and so that's, that's good to hear that. And I, when they go, well, we, there's something they said that once you're posted, uh, don't come for anybody exactly. to change. change yes, and pay and money and yes and those things. So where you are sent to, you accept and go. If you don't want to accept, then. Uh, nobody is going to change it. But, but, these, but these are 2018 teachers, and yeah. the question then comes up, what happens to those who you know, qualified before them who are still at home and have not been posted? Oh, teachers? No, I don't think we have some in that category. Well, we get them texting to us all the time. Uh, okay, then maybe, <laughs> maybe if, if you have a referral paper and go, mm -hmm. because I know a lot of teachers uh, had been posted, that those who went to colleges of education mm -hmm. and go. The only condition they had, which they had problems with, concerned teachers that go with the national service staff. Right. Okay, but right. that was for ultimately resolved. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've been posting them. So uh, I'm happy to hear that this badge has been posted. The other badge that I'm looking forward to and praying that they will be engaged uh, the beard graduates, mm -hmm. whole degree holders right. who are not uh, from the colleges of education, Absolutely. but they've gone to UCC, mm -hmm. Winneba, and they've read education and mm -hmm. they qualify to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the category I pray will also be uh, engaged and rolled on and posted to schools because the, the UCC 
when they buy, they did education. Mm. You get it. Right. And so I pray government begins to focus attention on that category of people, mm. or students, and then uh, engage them professionally to teach because they've got in the professional uh, uh, methodology to go or pedagogical skill to mm. go and teach. So uh, that's the category I pray we begin to okay. roll on. Zero two zero two one six 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 three three. That's our WhatsApp line. Join us with your thoughts and comments. We're also live on uh, Twitter and Facebook. And we're streaming, so uh, share thoughts and comments that will um, uh, push it out there to the rest of the world. So, any, so two issues have come up. These are 2018 teachers who have satisfied the requirements of the licensure and have been posted. And my question remains that there are people before them who have not. And you know, Mr. Easy just confirmed that the Bachelor of Education uh, graduates from UCC and UEW. Are still at home and he's hoping for them to to come but this certainly is good news is it not yes um thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here good morning uh, once again to you john and good morning to george good morning to our viewers especially mm. the very very good people of the tamale north mm. uh, constituency um johnny i think that um if you look at the costs mm -hmm. of you know the choices that we make mm -hmm. it demands that we are careful when we are faced with a decision to make a choice mm -hmm. sometimes the costs can be very hidden that it will take maybe a third eye mm -hmm. or very careful consideration to you know fully appreciate mm -hmm. the cost and perhaps I've you know, uh, just get yourself ready when you make that choice. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking in terms of the management of national resources, the decisions that we take as a government every, at every point in time uh, to either do one thing or the other because, you know, governance is all about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, alternative choices. Mm -hmm. So we have had an educational system that produced teachers like myself, right. where teachers were posted automatically mm. from school. You did not have a situation where they had to wait, had to go through all kinds of, you know, um, uncomfortable periods and situations mm. before they eventually get to know where they will be taught, mm. I mean, where they will be posted to teach. Mm. So now there's a new structure. And the new structure, for me, is creating an unnecessary problem for us. Oh. We already have problems with how nurses are posted. Mm. We already have problems with that. It was needless to introduce whatever reforms have been introduced in the uh, uh, teaching profession mm. without, first of all, dealing with even the problem at the nursing level and don't they need the licensure exam really? i don't think so to to because they, they're lo also looking for quality johnny johnny mm. i attended the colleges of education mm. you are taught mm -hmm. in school how to become a teacher in fact in the first year that i went to school okay those who failed the final year exam were withdrawn from the school they didn't become teachers. They, you were withdrawn even in the first year. And in the second year, you were supposed to do teaching practice. Right. If you did not pass the teaching practice, you were repeated. I don't, and, and, and after that, you come out of school mm. as a fully baked teacher after you have done your, uh, 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 what do you call it? Yeah, project work. Practice, you do, project you do work. your teaching practice and mm. you do project work before you are passed out as a teacher. Mm. So what license again do you need to prove to yourself that this indeed are those qualified to become teachers? Especially so, Johnny, when you advertise that SHS graduates mm. and uh, university graduates, polytechnic graduates can apply to be posted as teachers because you have vacancies in secondary schools. 
without even going through a teaching practice, you, apply, you recruit such people and send them to classrooms to teach. You remember that recently, the GS, through the Minister of Education, the Minister of Education through the GS, mm. recruited some teachers. The only qualification was that you were a graduate, either from the Polytechnic or from the university. You didn't have to have undertaken <coughs> any training in teaching. Yet you have people who are taught to become teachers, examined in the first year by UCC. If they fail, they were withdrawn, made to go through teaching practice, write project work. You are not satisfied with all of that. You still require them to write an exam before you post them. But you can safely and comfortably recruit somebody who has come from any polytechnic or you know, uh, 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 what do you call it, university, mm. and send them to the classroom to teach. What are you trying to fix? Those were the 8,000 teachers talking Yes, that what about. are you trying to fix by, by the Lancaster examination? What are you trying to fix by, you know, not following the program that was put in place to ensure that we had, in, you know, more schools available in our communities mm. that would require the teachers that we're training. That, does it not make meaning that, the for numbers, example, if you graduated in, say, 2013 and you have not been posted, you have been at home, you have not had your hands on the teaching, you know, the pedagogy and all of that, and it, fast forward to 2019, mm -hmm. you want to be posted, is it not just fair for you to be tested, if you like, to see if you have not become rusty or not? First of all, there was no need to have created a situation where the teachers who have graduated from the colleges of education will sit home for that long. There's no money. What do you do? So, you are paying allowances and you say there's no money. That's why I talk about choices. That's why I talked about choices. So, you have hit the nail right on the head. The delay is simply because government has put its money in less, you know, prioritized areas. The students need to be supported, don't they? Yes, they need to be supported and that is why as a a thoughtful government, the student loan trust was extended to cover that. So that as tertiary students, mm. they will also be treated like all tertiary students in this country. Because when you go to the university, mm -hmm. even if you are poor, the government doesn't give you allowance. But the government makes available student loan trust. When you go to the polytechnic, it's the same thing. The training college was depending on allowance. And I was part of those who fought for the training colleges to be upgraded. I was the national vice president of the Teacher Trainees Association of Ghana. Mm. And at the time, our colleagues used to tease us as senior, senior high students. <laughs> yes. Yes, Johnny. But you, at, the, at the time, you needed the same qualification to go to the colleges of education if you were going to the uh, uh, polytechnic. Mm. So we did not understand why I will need the same qualification to go to colleges of education. Mm. Yet I will come out with a certificate less than the person who goes to a polytechnic. And so we fought for the upgrade. And we were cautioned. I remember... Um, um, uh, Amiyao Ekofi, Ekofi, Professor Amiyao Ekofi. when he was Minister of Education. Right. I remember him cautioning us that, look, if you are upgraded to the tertiary level, you will be treated as tertiary students. You will not be fed and you will not be given allowance. We agreed. So everything comes at a cost, and that's what I was telling you. But you see, we knew that the student loan trust was available mm. for students who could not afford. But as a government... I mean, we in office, okay, wrap as up, the NDC, for me. thought Let's that see, what this party. country needed, what mm. this country needed was more teachers. Mm. We needed more schools and we needed more teachers mm. because we have a lot of classrooms that are still unmanned. So we needed more trained okay. teachers. Mm. So the allowance system, because government doesn't have money, mm. limited the number of people who could go into the college because government had to admit only those they could afford to pay. Mm. So the idea was take the allowance, let more people go, those who cannot afford, let them get student loan to support themselves, mm. but the money that you would have used to restrict the numbers mm. will be taken out, the numbers will increase. You use that money to expand on the schools that are available so that when they come out, you will not have to keep them home 
for another year or two. A, a quick, they have classrooms a, to a, go a, into a and for. A quick one before I uh, go to Mr. E.C. You mentioned that government had engaged, you know, graduates who had not had any the benefit of uh, Tra it, being trained as teachers. As teachers. Yes. But I'm sure you also do know that, you know, for, for teachers, there are different levels. Those who teach in the primary schools, yeah. those who teach. Yeah. Now, so if they are being recruited to go and teach the free SHS program, mm -hmm. there was the need for, for them to have looked at people who had the higher educational capacity to be able to instruct the student, don't you think? No, I don't, I don't agree. You see, teaching is a profession. It's okay. a skill. It is not just the knowledge you have. It's not everyone who has the idea mm. who can impart it. Right. It takes a skill mm. to teach the knowledge that you have. And it is that skill that is taught in the training colleges. Mm. So, I mean, you can find someone who will pass all his exams. He knows the thing. He has the best grades. Mm. But put him in a classroom and he can't teach anybody. But, you have, but if you go to the colleges of education, you are trained on how to teach. Okay. So you are, anything you are given, you learn how to teach it. Okay. Do you understand? So okay. that is why the colleges of education graduates are, are to be considered first. Okay, the most suitable. The most suitable. Even at the SHS level, trust me, even if a, a, call, a trained teacher... Mm. And today they can teach at the SHS level because they are trained, they, they, are, they come out with diploma. Right. They come out with de I, I mean, I, degrees. I, I know a lady so why, what, why, what stops them from teaching at the SHS I know, level? I know a lady friend who teaches in a basic school, but she has a degree yes. from, from yes. a training college. In fact, the, 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 the educationists will even tell you that uh, the best teachers mm. are needed at the basic level for the formative for stage. the formative mm. stage yes so i'm saying but i'm saying that it is important that when you have trained teachers okay. you engage them mm. first okay. before you think of others who are not trained okay. and but when you have your priorities mixed up mm. you will have teachers sitting at home because you want them to write a license examination okay. and then you'll go and engage people who are not trained to they, fill the class is, is your government is firing yeah. are you getting your priorities wrong yeah. no uh, <laughs> what are you not doing to oh, make Sweeney wait. and his people happy you know sweetie <laughs> i'm happy i'm meeting him and he said he's been part of tag we are the, well, the founding first vice president of okay TAG. Uh, so i have <laughs> vice presidents here uh, so we actually founded so so TAG. these are just so you know uh, <laughs> And these are teachers who have abandoned me <laughs> to get into government and politics and parliament. Um, so, so teachers, go and look for them. They are your members, please. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's, it's good. And two, uh, the 8,000 that were recruited were, you know, I told you right. about the BA yeah, who yeah. from UCC, yes, yes, they true. were picked from amongst them. Okay. Most of them okay. were picked from them. And then two, so he, he had a good them, argument on... Them. Let's get a clarity right. All of them or most yeah, of no, them? I, I no, I would say almost all of them no, because no, they, they, no, it was a prerequisite. He actually stated, you need a first degree to teach in the secondary schools. Right. You get it. And he said the diploma and co, but now Colleges of education, you're trained to teach at the basic level. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the, then the universities, you know, trained to teach in the secondary the and technical, okay. yes, the level. So that's it. Uh, you know, we, we need to go for international best practices, mm. right, in the teaching profession. You know, the curricular changes and mm. co mm. that we, we want to have engaging, engaging the students. I've been a teacher for 22 years. You get it. And so uh, that is important. You know, you acquire the skills as you go on. I agree with him. You need the pedagogical skills right. to be able to impart. I've known people when I was doing teaching who were very intelligent. I was teaching maths. Okay. Very good mathematics guys. But when you go and they are teaching and you stand and watch. They confuse you. You, you, you. you okay. don't see what they're doing. Yeah. I'm telling you. And apparently, they are not trained from the colleges of mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. I'm telling I've witnessed some very yeah. brilliant guy. Put any question there, he will solve it. But when he used to stand before students to impart that knowledge, you see that you so, get confused. So, so if we know this, yes. why don't we engage the trained ones? No, no, we engage. No, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. I spoke about the beard. That's mm -hmm. the category that I'm worried about because okay. a lot of them are there and not being posted. You get it. Mm -hmm. And so you put a question to Honorable that, 
if somebody were at home from 2013, you get it, mm -hmm. what happens? He needs to sharpen, okay? He's got all the skills. Mm -hmm. okay? So once you're trained, do you know what he said, everything? After all that, we do exams. Our time, we had something we call part one and part two. Right. If you fail part one, you're in trouble. You refer it, and then you write them before you go to write part two okay. and those things. So these are issues that we need to put in proper perspective. After that, come and justify. Even before then, our time, when you finish, you, we don't write licensure. Mm -hmm. We didn't write those. Mm -hmm. But you're posted to a place. The first year, they call it your home probation. Okay. Safety supervisors, everything will yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, justify your agreement. Yes. You must use that first year to justify your inclusion. Then they'll write a recommendation before you are made substantive teacher. professional teacher. Okay. You get it. So, you know, I think that will be akin to uh, the licensure exams. He, he, it he, happens. He, he mentions that. <laughs> Look, we are getting, we are getting yeah. there. That is more crucial than that. So, so would, you, would, you, would, you, would you, would you, would you, Mr. Zaisu, would you choose, would you choose between a full year of hands-on practice, call it internship or industrial attachment, to just a day of exactly. test score. Oh no, but the still, day of licensure. No, you have the licensure. You still go through the practical. I don't think they're going to GS. We take that away. They won't. You get it. It will be part of so it. So that's what I'm saying. You, you get it. So no, I mean, you and, go through and that I don't see so why if license, you are prepared, you've gone through the training at college, right. and then you are out. What's Check the kind of exams they write. It's just within your area of specialty. Is the license not <laughs> embedded in the certificates they receive? Yeah, it is. You're professional. Right. Cool. You get so why do they need to go right again? Uh, good. No, well, that is the, it happens in other jurisdictions. Okay? Licensure exams and cool. So, uh, professional courses. They want to make the teaching so, a professional. So, we are so, supposed to be professional. So in the other jurisdictions, you know, in the other know? jurisdictions <laughs> do they also have the provision where the teachers go and teach one, for one year before they are regularized? Okay, I cannot speak uh -huh. to that. Mm -hmm. So you, you see, it. we are completely blind. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You know, these things are necessary. important to make us professional, okay. okay? The lawyers go through professional exams and all that. The Institute of Engineers, you have professional right, exams, right. chartered accountants and co. And it's only in teaching that we had a lot of, uh, we used to call them people teachers. Okay. You get right, those days, right. people teachers. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately, uh, along the line, usually like school dropouts, these, yes, you who, know, who we can have speak modular. more English in the village and <laughs> yes, they push them yes. to be a teacher. Then we had modular programs under J. Rollins mm -hmm. and all those things, upgraded the people teachers. And fortunately, these days, people have opted to go do uh, teaching as a profession. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who have had very good grades and have chosen teaching. Okay. okay. One of the attractive or the incentives mm -hmm. that attracted people there, of course, they are our. Yeah. <laughs> he knows it. But, but so. Sweeney, but Sweeney, say, Sweeney says, no. look, you it, have, you have the student loan trust fund. Yeah, it's the ideal why do you Why do you not channel people and direct them to go there and go and take no, loans see, and, and get guarant guarantees so that they can pay back when they are firmly on their Well, it's, it's another option. They opted for that. We feel we still, you know, can sustain the allowance and attract good people into the teaching profession, no. okay? And then let them go through the training. Look, a lot of people, some of us wouldn't be sitting here as uh, professional teachers and co, but for the allowances, okay, that attracted us to get there. Because I finished sixth form before going to college. But, but you left you eventually. It. Oh, 22 <laughs> years, <I said. laughs> but, but, but then the question, the question that, that Mr. see is that, yeah. look, if that is the argument, you're supposed to pay your student loan after school, yeah. you know, within a certain period. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't get the students to go and pick their loans, that's making, creating a situation where government is able to keep graduates from 2013 and hold them on because they have no obligation to the state and government is losing nothing really in terms of the retention of the loans that they have taken, don't you think? Oh, no, but definitely government is going to find a way as we have the special uh, uh, scheme created, the student's loan scheme, right? We, we took SNIT loan. You get it. Unfortunately, I've paid it off. You know, we took SNIT loans. But now there's a special uh, v purpose vehicle mm -hmm. for the student loan administration. So uh, you go there and they, in fact, last time the administrator was complaining about 70, 75 percent mm -hmm. of students are not coming back to pay the, the loans and co. So we need to fashion a way to recoup these ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the meantime, we still want to attract the best into our teaching. He said it right. And I was happy when he said it that mm -hmm. at the lower level, internationally, you, you have 
have very sometimes professors mm. in basic. That's why University of Cape Coast uh, decided to have this uh, basic childhood, ed childhood yeah, foundation education, yeah. education and all that. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so to train people uh, to come professionally at a basic level. We had some at my school in Fansman. We had some people who had done basic, basic education or foundation mm. education who were teaching in the secondary. And okay. then the audits, you know. They, expo, they, they ask all of them to go to where they belong. Okay. You get it. Okay. So you go, you are trained especially to handle children at that mm. level, the child mm. psychology mm. and all that. Mm. And so specifically go and then work there. Uh, I think uh, gradually, uh, you know, we mopping up the numbers of teachers that will get opportunity to go and teach. I don't have any qualms. The Honorable is a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. I believe he can table a motion in the house to see, uh, to make a case that, uh, the licensure exams is, is after all not uh, necessary, but I think okay. it's very important. Well, uh, uh, Convince has just I'm sent me a, a, a snapshot, <laughs> and <laughs> this is this is the graphic. Uh, you know, it says, says new teacher licensing starts from 2016-2017 academic year. So oh, okay. he says that uh, Suhini <laughs> actually uh, was mooted under your government uh, when your government was in power. What do you say? Well, you see, that is the problem that we have. <laughs> Well, I would have still been opposed to this. Yeah. It didn't matter whether it was mooted by my... I'm saying that the priorities are wrong. Okay. And so if this was announced by the GS at the time, it was not as if, you know, it was something that... Well, these are not things that are discussed at cabinets. Mm. Yeah. You know, these are things that are discussed at the policy level. Right. And I'm saying that I will continue to be on the side of teacher trainees, that their training is rigorous enough mm is rigorous enough. I mean, compared to the other professions that George has mentioned, mm. some of the things you have to go through yeah. to come out to become a teacher, they don't go through that. So what license examination and do you need? teaching practice is a key. It's okay. a key okay. for you to okay. be qualified. Let, let's, let's talk about the two tag uh, guys in a crunch meeting today with government. They've been on strike for some time because we're talking about education. We'll quickly yeah. talk about that and then we'll get into PDS issues. But the Accra... Uh, Kumasi, Tamale, Sunyani, learning has come to a halt. That ultimately means that the calendar has been disrupted. That ultimately means that we would have to spend more because if we are giving the students some <coughs> benefits, we would have to spend more to, to keep them because whether we like it or not, they are in school at this point. They are drawing electricity, they are drawing water, they are everything else. And if they stay longer, we have to pay more. When is government bringing this to a close, Mr. E. C. Uh, and, their, and their case is, is genuine. They say, look, yeah. you have upgraded us, and you are not bringing the money. <laughs> 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 equal, equal work for equal pay. Yeah, as, as, uh, you know, I, I understand their uh, worry. But the truth, again, is that there's a genuine issue that must be wholly addressed in the te te technical uh, university te teachers. Which, which is? Uh, this thing. It's about their upgrading qualification. You know, now, you know, now, as we speak, mm. to be a lecturer at any university, you must have a PhD. Right. That's the basic thing. Mm. Now, if you have a master's and feel, you are an assistant lecturer. A junk lecturer. <laughs> Some, something like mm. that. And most, to be honest with you, I'm not trying to deride anybody at a technical university. I know people with first degree who were teaching there. Okay. First degree, we were teaching a technical university. That was because it was H and D. Good okay. in those days, and so when they were tra they transitioned into the technical university, it's you know it's going to take time. So, rightfully, a uh, national council for tertiary education will give them the transition <laughs> moment uh, to upgrade themselves. Okay. Every lecturer has been asked to upgrade up mm. to a PhD level. Mm. So if you have MPhil, you, they give you five years within which you must have your PhD. <laughs> you get it. And so this is the you know, conundrum that the government is dealing with as far mm. as the, the upgrading. But they want everything to be done and block that, hey, we've moved you, you're a lecturer now, this is your this thing, uh, allowance, type and grades, everything. You get it. Mm -hmm. But the government or the NCT is saying, look, we are going to deal with the issue according to your qualifications what, what, within what, the structure. What kind of conversation went on before the upgrade <laughs> was done? Was this understanding given to the lecturers at the technical universities, at, at the polytechnics at the time? Johnny, must it be given? Must it be given? Because that's the prerequisite to be in faculty. 
Okay, mm -hmm. to be a faculty member, these are the basic qualifications you must well, have. Well, I was always, already a, a university faculty member at the, at the <laughs> No, now it's a, a university. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got a technical mm -hmm. university. So your status has changed. And so it will go with the lecturer at the University of Ghana, the lecturer at the University of Education, Winneba, University of Cape Coast, UDS. You get it. Mm -hmm. The basic qualification, you at the technical university, that's what you must also meet. So between, okay? between experience yeah. of somebody see, who has taught there for 10, 15 years with a first degree, now the system has changed and he doesn't have the requisite qualification of a PhD to teach. Do we lose him and his experience, or oh, no. do we have do we find something for him to do in there and give him a chance to upgrade? No, that's what is in done. The no, that's what they've done. You know, you know, the conversion was done under them, it started under them, so these things were laid out. You know, and all these we've come, we've not changed anything, we are continuing with that. But the issue is, they want that because immediately it's now a technical university, okay. all the conditions that the University of Ghana lecturer or UCC lecturer gets must also be due them. And they are saying, Yes, you are entitled to that, mm. but uh, your entitlement is conditioned on something that. As a faculty member, you're teaching now degree students. Mm. You must have A, B, C, D to make you that. Mm. In the meantime, that first degree holder, they've given him time. Mm. Five, six, seven years to upgrade to the point where he might otherwise he loses his membership mm. of faculty at the technical university. Okay. That's what they are saying. This is the category of lecturers you have at the technical university. Mm. Let's deal with your categories accordingly. Okay. You get it. We will not do it and block. block. And that is what, you know, we've got a stalemate in the whole negotiation. I think if they agree that mm -hmm. let's do it, uh, Tutag agrees that do it that way and mm -hmm. give the other members, nobody's going to lose his job, but give them time to upgrade and meet the uh, standards required to be a lecturer at the technical university. Mm -hmm. Then we make progress. Uh, it's not the best. You know, students are suffering as we speak. Mm -hmm. And we've all been students before. And having been a student leader, you always want to uh, feel what they are going through. Mm -hmm. uh, they go there, last I had them, they will be on campus throughout the day and then, you know, now, spend now money. Now senior, senior administrators have joined. Yes, them, they are joining. Which so means that they are shutting down the school. Virtually. But they virtually, are there. <laughs> virtually. I'll plead with the education ministry and then the NCT uh, to re-engage these people and make progress. Uh, the stalemate is, is dragging. I think it's about the third week mm -hmm. now. It's dragging mm -hmm. and it's not in anybody's uh, interest. They say when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. And the grass is suffering. Who are the students? Mm -hmm. uh, let's make pro progress uh, and have something. Put them on their standard standards. Mm -hmm. uh, that, the one who doesn't qualify to meet that, he mm -hmm. understands. But he gets his book allowance, uh, research allowance, and all that. But you must do research to end the research allowance. Okay. Cassandra Chum, Ampofo, good morning to you at the um, Ghana Education Service. Also, Echo Vicent, I know you are watching. Good morning <laughs> to you. <laughs> you guys for Look Sharp. <laughs> Yes, um, what's your what's your thought on I this understand one? Understand, there will be a meeting yeah. uh, today. Mm. I hope that that meeting will resolve. They uh, they, they, they are the saying issues. that until their issues are resolved, one hundred percent, they are not ready to meet anybody. <laughs> they won't negotiate <laughs> because you have upgraded them. You have kept them for a long while, and you are coming back to tell them more story again. They want well, to see Kwacha. I, I listen because from seventy six percent, they want to go one one fourteen, like how their counterparts yeah, in the university yeah. have gone. And, and, and it's and it's only fair. I mean, um, I like the argument my brother makes about the change of status. Hmm. You know, once your status change, you are entitled to all the good and yeah. bad associated with the new status, hmm. and that is why in the debate over allowance. I thought that we were not very, you know, uh, honest. We we're more political than, than, than sincere. Choices. <laughs> but you see, I listened to the president of Tattoo last night on okay. uh, Sister Station, and mm -hmm. I uh, got the impression that their doors are not shut. They are willing to talk. Okay. Uh, they are ready to negotiate. And it is my hope that today's meeting will resolve uh, the impasse mm. so that the students who are currently at the receiving <laughs> end of the strike, you know, uh, get better, uh, something better because you cannot uh, pay your tuition fees mm -hmm. and then prepare yourself to be in school for a certain period of days uh, only for, you know, some of these things to leave you 
uh, stranded on Kamloops, feeding on you know uh, money that you intended to save mm. as you were studying. Now you are not studying, you are not <laughs> attending lectures, but you are eating. And, you know, <laughs> and maybe after this strike, they will have to adjust the calendar and yeah. you will have to stay longer in school and all yeah. that. So I think that um, 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 it is my hope that it will be addressed. But you see, Johnny, there's a bigger issue of the crisis that we have in the educational sector. Okay, before you get in there, I, I, let's consider the parents and then we'll talk about the upgrade and the, the repercussions. The parents at this point, mm. and nobody's talking about them, uh, they, they are the ones funding everything. Well, at the tertiary level, sometimes it is assumed that these are adults, yeah. you know, even though majority of them, yes, mm. are still funded by their, you know, mm. uh, uh, parents. Mm. But at the polytechnic level, maybe because of how the years that we spend in school, school have been reduced, reduced right. it's, it's, it's possible for you to still find yeah. a majority of them. In fact, yeah, I, spoke, 19, I spoke to some and students. And that's even the that danger. I mean, with the security concerns that we have now, parents are not comfortable leaving their children in some of these uh, campuses, mm. especially when they know teachers are on strike right. and they think that uh, uh, if not even the fact that they can be tempted to go wayward, mm. they are also exposed to all the uh, kidnapping stories that we have heard. Yes, I mean, yes, yes, yes. It's, 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 it's something, they are exposed to it. I'm not saying it's going to happen, yeah. but they are exposed yeah. to it. It is yeah. a danger it's, it's a that thought, every it's a thought parent, to have. Yes, yeah. every parent will, th will, will consider in this time. So I'm saying that it is very important that the matter is resolved okay. so that the teachers will return to the classroom and engage the children mm. uh, to ensure that they don't go wayward and they are not, I mean, their, expo their exposure to some of these dangers that I've spoken about, kidnapping and others, will also be reduced. Okay. So now, you, you, now, you, you, now you to talk, the crisis. You talk about the big crisis, but yes. let me share a little update Don't that uh, Echo, Echo Vincent uh, yeah. shared with me. Oh, I, 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 I appreciate the mm. fact that you want to share crisis, but is, there's a communication, a joint meeting held between government team represented by the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, Ministry of Education, National Council for Tertiary Education, and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission on one part, and Technical University uh, Teachers Association to tag on, on the other, the conference room of the uh, NELR on the 17th of October 2019. The parties agreed as follows. One, that the effective date for the payment of generic allowances, car maintenance, electricity, rent, off campus, and security, as well as allowance for office holders, responsibility, entertainment, and fuel is August 2019. Um, they, that the government team will further engage the ministries of finance and education for approval and subsequent payment by the end of the November 2019 and communicate to TUTAG. Um, the rest of the National Accreditation Board certificates report on two tag members who petitioned NCTE on, on the staff audit to be released by the close of October 2019. And uh, that the parties further agreed to maintain the goodwill uh, that characterized the negotiations in all future engagements. This is uh, supposed to be signed by the Minister for Employment and Labor Relations with the witness and Dr. Solomon A. Kilson, National President of TUTAG, and Mr. Joseph Danzo, who is the General Secretary of TUTAG, is dated the 17th day of October 2019. So that's the update there. But as it stands, the Finance Ministry is supposed to give clearance. So that's what Echo Vincent said. So the parties have agreed but we're waiting for clearance from the finance ministry to push. So progress uh, has been made. Yes, some progress, but <laughs> until the finance minister <laughs> yes, puts pen to yes, paper, yes. they can only call it a promise. That is good. But is so good. let's talk about the, uh, the, the, the bigger picture that you want, to, you want to push in. Yes, in fact, I'm looking at the time and I am wondering if it is a useful exercise to do now because okay. I think that uh, PDS is something that okay. I would want us to look okay. at extensively. Because the other time... You see, uh, just briefly, <laughs> if you look at the problems with our tertiary education and how unprepared we are for the inflow mm -hmm. of you know free shs students from the secondary school level mm -hmm. and you care about education you need to be worried okay <laughs> and if you also look at the basic level uh, that is uh, without excluding uh, shs mm -hmm. uh, primary jss mm -hmm. and even kindergarten the neglects that you know they are faced with today should be of concern to anybody who cares about mm. education. And we must care about education because okay. if you look at the poverty levels in this country, okay. education so far is one of the <laughs> surest way 
that you can, you know, uh, uh, work to reduce mm. poverty mm. in the country. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't know if I can tax yeah. briefly. Also, oh. the three SHS challenges, uh, gradually, we are tackling them. And I would rather we had free SHS with challenges, which we rectify as we go along, than to go back to the status quo. You get it. Where he, he went to school in the north, correct me if I'm wrong, there was some kind of scholarship there from Kwame Nkrumah. Kind of yeah, it's, it like opened opportunities. Yes. yes, it opened opportunities for a lot of people. You get it. So once it's ruled out across the nation, it's good news. And look I at the I numbers think, that I are going. I think question I have <laughs> No, you touched on it. You touched on it. I talked about, I talked about, you see, sometimes <laughs> you, you are going around with a hammer. So anything you see is a yeah, is, <laughs> No, 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 you touched on free SHS. You see, that is why he said I touched on free SHS. I didn't. I said, I said, if you look at the unpreparedness, if you look at, I said, if you look at the challenges at the tertiary level okay yes. and the unpreparedness of the tertiary level to receive the inflow okay <laughs> that's what i talked about i did not but, even but, talk about the problems at the SHS. <laughs> hey, i talked okay. about how unprepared we are at okay. the tertiary oh, level oh, oh, to oh, receive oh, 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 the okay. influx okay. Right. Okay. and then i also I talked about it. the neglect at the basic level mm. without oh, a basic then. excluding shs mm. i yes. talked about primary jss no, and kindergarten but i thought that i thought that they didn't even touch but that's the goal with the SHS in your head anything they hear I like, I like. I, I, but but really, I, I, I know that um, the, there's a committee. I didn't touch on I know that there's a committee that was set up by the president <laughs> with uh, Professor Yanka, uh, Deputy Minister for Education, in charge to ensure uh, or see how we are able to create space for these new, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. the, the, the last cohorts of the free yeah. SHS to yeah. get in there. So, but we have not seen so any, any report from, 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 oh, from no, the government. There, there will be, as time goes on. We'll it's be, it's be more yeah. than a year. I mean, oh, no, the, 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 the noble we'll, professor. We're we'll preparing for that. And the basic level, you know, the capitation is being increased by about 120%. Okay. So gradually, these are things that are being tackled. And government is taking their registration and all that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just to help parents at that level. One big, one big issue that also comes to <laughs> mind is the uh, the conversion of all the teacher <laughs> training colleges into universities. Yeah. And I'm looking at what Tutag is demanding for at this point. <laughs> and, and I am thinking, and I am thinking, look, <laughs> are, we, are we getting into trouble as well? Well, 0202166633. So he is anxious to talk about uh, PDS. And well, the, the 19th of October brought to us a letter written uh, from from the the U.S. side of town, <laughs> and it says that the government of Ghana informed the Millennium Challenge Corporation (MCC) in Washington D.C. of its decision to terminate the concession agreement between the Electricity Company of Ghana (ECG) and private operator Power Distributor Services uh, Distribution Services of Ghana (PDS). The United States of Ghana notes this decision with regret based upon the conclusions of the independent forensic investigation. The U.S. position is that the transfer of operations, maintenance, and management of the Southern Distribution Network to the private concessionaire on March 1, 2019 was valid and therefore the termina termination is unwarranted. As such, MCC has confirmed that the 190 million US dollars funds granted to Ghana at the March 1 transfer to the 20 year concession for ECG to PDS are no longer available. The United States underscores the importance of contract sanctity as essential to a conducive investment climate and a precondition for inclusive economic growth. In the spirit, uh, the United States has worked with the government of Ghana since the latter days, uh, latter July 30 suspension on the concession in the hope of finding a mutually acceptable solution that respected contract sanctity and the government of Ghana's interest in the restructuring of the concession. And this is what we have. It says moving forward, the U.S. government through MCC will continue to implement the tranche one funds of 308 million with the uh, MIDA. <coughs> so you see, <coughs> is that power play in all of this beyond uh, the FTI reports that identified some things that they said were materially and fundamentally wrong? Yeah. Now the U.S. says it regrets it and is now looking at contract sanctity. Is that power play? Uh, 
uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but I know uh, the, there's a team that has been engaging uh, with the MCC authorities, uh, but this letter uh, is, seemed to be very emphatic on, on the way they want to go. Uh, it's worrying because if you look at all these breaches and the investigation, if, if you're getting into a concessionaire agreement and there's a condition precedent, and the same condition precedent is not met that by the critical parts, okay? in the whole exercise, which is the PDS in this case. Something wasn't right. Mm. The insurance guarantee, you know, bank guarantee reduced to insurance guarantee, mm. uh, which we want you to have that leeway and make that to make progress in the whole concessionaire agreement. And then we find out that is fraught with problems, mm. okay? Mm. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised the U.S. is having difficulty to appreciate this challenge that the government is going through. And then again, the issue of the fee payment, mm -hmm. okay, about 12.25 uh, million, which payment was made one by one of the partners within the PDS uh, enclave, mm -hmm. uh, one million, and then the rest, the loan taking, and then others taking from the cash flow of P PDS or mm -hmm. ECG. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm. It's, it's problematic. If you have been given something and you are to meet certain conditions and make the thing function properly, I shudder to comprehend why U.S. has difficulty uh, in understanding this clear uh, breaches by the parties involved. You get it. And so if government wants to restructure it, okay, I think they should rather, government is giving them assurance that within, uh, by 31st, we would have finished with this restructuring approach. And U.S. has also said they are worried. You know, you know this is a precondition to getting Compact 3. Right. You get it. Right. And, and Compact 3 is very key because of the sub-regional electricity engagement they are going to have. Mm. So that uh, if we have excess power, it will be easier for us to export to other sub-regional countries and co. So we want to qualify for that. Mm. And we are saying because of these breaches, we don't think the current partners, you know, can continue. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's not all the partners. Okay. There are some partners, we will do some restructuring there. Mm -hmm. And the intention of government going forward is to get maybe uh, institutions, IPOs and others come in. So that this whole uh, cry of woof, woof, uh, family and friends, which mm -hmm. no shred of evidence has been adduced so far. You get it. And so we'll all be laid to rest. I, I they will make progress. I see subtle threats in there, the 190 Definitely. million. Definitely. And, and Definitely. I, I feel sad about yes. it. Yes. U.S. Can we not do without countries. that money? Oh, we may. We, you see, we need it. To be honest, I wouldn't sit here and say uh, they, 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 they can go to because hell. No, I wouldn't do that. Because we can't generate it locally. Oh, no, we can. But this one is to help. You know, we don't forget this government has a vision of Ghana beyond eight. Okay, it's, we are gradually rolling and, out policies. And that includes policies. putting ECG in such a, a mess. Oh, what mess? There's million. been a challenge. There's yeah, been, no, no, there's been a challenge. I wouldn't sit here and say there's not been a challenge in this old PDS uh, Kabul. It's, it's a mess. It's, been, it's not a challenge. Oh, no, it's been detected. Mm. Uh, remedi remedies are being put in place to ensure that the right things are done. Mm. And that's why I'm worried that the U.S., a champion of democracy, good mm. governance, and anti-corruption, they have laws against corruption and other things. And so if something untoward is being done, in a partner you're engaging in, and then the partner wants to correct him and then make progress in a structured way. And the U.S. is saying, I'm not going to give you the chance to do that. I get worried. Sweeney, we have sovereignty as a country. Uh, now U.S. is asking us to do one or two. <laughs> Where do you stand? Well, um, I feel very sad about the situation. I was eager for us to talk about it, but I also think it's important I share this message with you from okay. Echo Jan who okay. is a former National Deputy General Secretary of TAG. Okay. Uh, he says that, uh, for the records, no teacher has been posted. No trained teacher from College of Education has been posted since 2018, okay. which is unprecedented. The statement from GES said that trained teachers who completed in 2018 mm -hmm. would be posted by November ending 2019. Okay. It didn't say they have been posted. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I speak as a former TAG National Executive and a victim as well. I can state on authority that the sector minister hasn't been fair with us all. We met with him severally, and all what he told us were never fulfilled. 
you delayed our postings with the introduction of licensure exams mm -hmm. and national service. You came out later to tell us we could be posted in October 2018. Okay. You refused to do that. Just this year, you have promised to post us twice, They'll in post. October and September. You posted. failed to honor your promise, and now you are promising to post us in November. They'll are we free to believe him now? They'll so that is why I think it is important. So he has doubts. He has doubts. That look, because the promises that were made were made in the past were not fulfilled. And so we should not proceed with the discussion as if finally they have been ah, posted. Okay. This is yet another promise. <laughs> and so we should hold <laughs> them. You know, so okay. I thought it was important. Okay. I'll share with you. Oh, no, it's you important. See, Johnny, so you have connected power now, so run on the power. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really sad this morning about this whole development with PDS. And you see, John, it's important that we don't confuse the, figure, the, the, the issues about national sovereignty and about the need for us to conduct ourselves in such a way mm -hmm. that we attract respect mm -hmm. or we earn respect from people that, you know, uh, we must make ourselves deserving of respect mm -hmm. before we talk of national sovereignty. Okay. I am very, very convinced mm -hmm. that this morning President Kufo will be very sad. Why? Reading this statement from the MCC. You see, the Millennium Challenge Compact mm -hmm you can say it's President Kufour's baby. Right. He was the one who got the first tranche. Mm. Unfortunately, his tenure ended before disbursement started. Right. right. President Mills inherited it, and together with President Mahama, mm. ensured <clears throat> that we did everything to put the compact to the benefit of the people of Ghana. Mm. So it was into agriculture. Right. And as a result, we got the N1. N1. Yeah. That was because President Mills and President Mahama saw the vision of President Kofo, and so they, they, they took the, the, the compact mm -hmm. and utilized it. Yeah. Because of how well it was utilized, the, uh, the American government gave us compact two, mm -hmm. which was supposed to go into energy. Right. Mm -hmm. President Mahama saw to the receipt of the first tranche of 308 mm -hmm. by also doing things above board. Such as? I mean, such as, you know, the reforms that were supposed to take place. Mm. He initiated it and everything was transparent and above board. Mm. That is what you, you, you talk, you talk <clears throat> that's where you speak of good governance. Mm. Now, unfortunately, he lost the elections, handed over to you, President Akufuado, just like President Kufo handed over to President Mills, mm. and you have messed it up. You have taken us to a situation where we are so embarrassed and bruised in the manner that we have been embarrassed. So don't talk of national sovereignty. And let me tell you, let me tell you something, Johnny. The, when I saw this and heard this talk about national sovereignty, a song sprang to my mind. Which which song? Yankawun Tienu, Debi Debi Naobehu. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and, and that when you, when you chew cola, okay. and when you chew cola, you think something, but when you chew uh, pepper, pepper. Mm. that is when your nose will sweat. Is that not what the song says? So we have been talking about the grand corruption mm. and the what, state capture the and the stealing that is going on in this country the corruption by this government. Now that attempt to steal the American money is what has led us here. Oh God! Let's be very fair. Yeah. It is that attempt. Who, Give us the basis. Listen, 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 listen. Who's trying to steal? Listen, listen. You see, this whole PDS thing, and people have said, "Oh, the Americans are defending PDS." L read their statement. They are defending the sanctity of contracts. Yes. Right. Yes. They are not defending PDS. They have seen that there are unholy and unhealthy moves by this government to create an impression that they want to, you know, correct things. Mm. But what they see is an attempt to hijack. Oh. It's an attempt to, to mess up further. The, the restrictive tendering, that's what you're talking about. It is I not just the restrictive tendering. It is the arm twisting that didn't succeed. That led to the government now announcing this sovereignty kind of things. Look, speak to the players in PDS. They will tell you, and if you look at even the, the reports that have come to Parliament and the uh, 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 Finance Committee of Parliament and the Energy Committee, you see where, where some of the uh, uh, stakes, the shareholder structure yeah. keeps changing. 
new companies are George. introduced at some point. George. At some point, George, what, what, at, at what, some what, point, George, watch your no, listen, for. listen, That's listen. America, no, Manila District. Allow, allow, allow. TG in but this case was twenty-eight. So no, so. I can help him with it. Yeah. TG here is twenty-eight. <laughs> yes. Eh? But yes. if you go to the committee report yeah. of Parliament, yeah. you see TG is ten percent, <laughs> and then some eighteen percent is also shared with some people. <laughs> I mean, there, there is an attempt, the, the U.S. government have seen that this government cannot be trusted. And so they are, they are sticking with what parliament passed. Mm. They are sticking with the sanctity. And, and read the statement again. Mm. They talk about their hope. Right. <clears throat> when government suspended the, con yeah. the, the deal, yeah. they were hoping mm. that government meant government well. Do, yes. government now they have, and that is why they were engaging them. But in engagement, they have realized that the government doesn't mean well. Oh, how? The government, the government intentions are, are are not are not are not well meaning. It's not for the country. It is ah. about who holds what. You have not seen that. Ah. Oh, oh, come on, come on. People come on. in government that's what want I'm saying. to. Oh, that's, oh, what I'm saying. Oh, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What oh, business God. does the finance minister, for example, have asking the shareholders? To meet and restructure the, the finance minister owns ECG. He's he, he's the, the manager of ECG literally. No, you but me. you see, Parliament had passed the arrangement. If they had problems with it, why did they bring that agreement to Parliament and then try to well, vary it behind Ghana's that? interest? Please protect Ghana's interest. Yes, the Ghanaian shareholders, their interest, they must be there. But you to see, you see, can, can, I, can I ask? I'm looking at the time, and I'm, and I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah, to yeah, say yeah, so many things yeah, at the same time. Yeah, you are plenty. You are poor ones. So, George, it is George, George, because the time is not George, very friendly. George, no, 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 look, don't move, don't uh, move. Um, Johnny, for example, Duncan Amoa says that this whole restrictive tendering thing is just another ploy to get in family and friends and to no. cherry pick and give it to no. who you want no. to exactly. have no, because I'm... you are not happy with the the way PDS has handled it yes. and there's even power play within you know your ranks and so you want to pick it and give it no they, they, I know certain things that I think you know one the pillar I wouldn't be surprised if Morocco and, and Nigeria are still retained therein and then looking at the local partners okay possibly institutions, uh, IPOs, and then workers of ECG are likely to be called on to come and take shares in it. Is this family and friends matter? Could okay, we, could we That's have, why we say within we, two months we can do these Could things. we have supported, so let's give us could the, we the have supported to ECG yeah. to deal with its own matters and to become much more viable like we're looking for, as opposed to going now to the, the Americans and now they are breathing down our necks and telling us what to do and how to do what No, to do. as part of the compact agreements, you know, you needed to privatize, get private participators in the ECG consortium or everything. You get it. And so that is the precondition. And that is what uh, we were doing. ECG had you always did, said they had you, challenges you, you, you with taking my, their revenues and all that. that no, They've not been that, able to make that, progress. Does this not okay. make... Look, but so far, but, but, but if you say, so far, until you say, these challenges, George, they were doing well. George, if you say... ECG has not made progress. I will disagree with no, you. No, no, on the issue of collection. Exactly. Of their because revenue and because government yes. itself owes ECG a lot of money. No, that's so why if you a pay private them, participant. If you, if you pay them, hold government to pay their bills. And it's part of the agreement. It's there. It's catenary. That government must uh, be able to continuously pay their indebtedness to ECG or now PDS. It's part of the initial agreement. So we are giving the dog a bad name and we are shaving oh, it. Oh, no. That's what we are doing to ECG. No, we want to restructure it properly. And it, it's so, 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 you were talk, so talking about the family and friends thing. First of all, yes. Joyce says, no Joyce says there's no evidence. Well, you see, you see uh, first of all, I want to say shame on all those who stood against the minority when we raised concerns about the, uh, but your you concerns know. don't have legs. Allow him, allow him, please. Allow him. When we raise concerns about this whole transaction, shame on them. I mean, we raised the concerns. We raised the, raised the concerns. They defended PDS. They defended the whole transaction to the hilt. Now they have come to the realization that indeed some of the concerns that we raised were valid, and that is why, and that is why they are now attempting to okay. abrogate the contract, okay. but have used no. very wrong ways to do that. And that okay. is why the American government is uncomfortable. And okay. that is why, look, 
We still think that the contract was a bad, I mean, the whole process leading up to the award of that contract mm. was bad, and that is why we thought it should have been cancelled. But the, the, the means through which the government is using to cancel it okay. is what is problematic, and that is what the you Americans are us. against. Okay. So, no, so, no, we will not, listen, we will not, correct, we will not follow you to do the wrong thing oh, in your no, interest no, no, no. and claim that you are doing no, no. so in so, the interest so, of senior, the people. Senior Elvis, so, that quote so, of the final so, newspaper says, NDC shouted PDS is corruption. MCC says no corruption, so allow PDS to continue its contract. Ah, what has Sweeney got to say about that? That's the point I'm making, Johnny. That's the point I am making. The point I'm making is that consistently we have told them that the process leading up to the award okay. of the contract to PDS was problematic so and should have been cancelled. They refuse so to listen. To now they come to the to the to the table that mm. yes, we agree with you. But the process and okay. the and the way they we are now doing it, so the way they are doing it. Okay. it does not guarantee the interest of the nation okay. and does not guarantee the sanctity of contracting. Yeah, no. mm. It does not guarantee, it does not show transparency. Mm. It does not show uh, 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 goodwill. Started. And that is why the Americans are uncomfortable. That is why we are also uncomfortable. Okay. We are not uncomfortable because we think PDS has a good contract. We are okay. uncomfortable because we think the procedure... And the, and, intention, and, the and the intention, and the intention behind, and the intention behind your cancellation you is wrong. As for Miracle Meridian, if yeah. you are interested in that debate, we can have we it can have because it. it is simply, so it, it is, have, it is simply okay. one of the fraudulent ways that you attempted okay. to hijack the shares we, we of the go. PDS. Thank you. Just this one, personal, personal request, personal request, personal request. I beg you. I just want to, I just want to thank the very good people. I just want to thank the very good people of the Kalapahini community in my constituency. Last weekend, Saturday. Um, they showed me so much love. They showed me so much, you know, uh, they gave me so much inspiration when I went to uh, visit some uh, victims of uh, the flood that mm. happened in the constituency. Right. Uh, they came out in their numbers to work with me to inspect uh, the communities. I managed to get some few relief items, mm. about a hundred bags of cement, from you know, some rice. He didn't help me, unfortunately, yeah. but I got some mosquito nets, treated <laughs> mosquito nets, hundred pieces and hundred bags of cement and some rice and oh, oil right, that I went so to, you know, that's donate that's to them. And I thank, I thank, I thank the chief, okay. I thank the chief uh, of Kalpohani and his elders, and I also thank the community, Bazuga. Uh, She's probably and uh, all the other you that Kahoon. came up. I am very, very <laughs> I love you. Well, so that's it. Uh, goodwill there. I, I wish that George and his team would would uh, would. I mean, not more. I wish I wish that George and his team will will consider will consider preventing disaster than trying to solve it when it happens. I, I wish. I wish. Because it is actually the key mandate. Yeah. Anyway, George AC is the National Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, and also Alassane Suhini, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He's in the race again and he hopes to win it. And uh, well, his people in Kalpuni are already supporting him. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>